and Sally were just people that um, Mike had a profound effect on track motorcycle riding in the United States. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. I did some quick math, and, and you know, Mike had personal interaction with 20,000 riders. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm probably being conservative there. 20,000 riders. I mean, wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've did a lot of riders meetings, but that's not personal interaction. I mean, Mike stood in front of people, you know, teaching, uh, teaching them how to be, you know, safer, more proficient, and ultimately have more fun uh, on their motorcycle. What an incredible feat. You know, Absolutely. I look at that, like, wow. You know, 20,000 people. I mean, that's, that, what is that? That's like a, a concert hall, a good size, you know, concert. never broke his cool and he nope. never got mad he just straight as a line done take care of it done yeah never any drama mike was just mike everywhere he went i know that i mean richard richard and i raised our baby here you know quite like everybody has like a lot of people have but we truly <laughs> raised Ryan here and when she graduated high school you guys came out to the house yeah um, <laughs> you know just Mike is just Mike he we had a whole tent in the front yard it was beautiful and you guys pulled up on your on your Harley right and he walks in he walks into the crowd we got like 50 60 people there or it something was fantastic. Now. <laughs> you know the the table and the cake you know high school graduation normal stuff picture board whatever God. and he sits down and he pulls off his motorcycle boots and he puts on his sandals and he puts those boots and his socks right underneath the cake table <laughs> <laughs> julie and i were rolling we were like that's Mike. Mike. Mike is Mike. Didn't move him. Didn't say a word. That's just, loved just where every he needed his boots Everybody got their piece of cake over Mike's boots. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. That is a true story. He said, we're going on 20 years now. That's a long time. He was here for every single year and barely missed an event. If that, that I can remember. Him and Sally together were the pinnacle of STT as it started and as it grew, giving their weekends tirelessly for all of us. And uh, it, it's just, it's my honor to stand here and recognize that. Um, it's, it's truly humbling. Um, it's been an incredible 20 years for Sport Bike Track Time here at Groton with Mike and Sally. Um, yeah, absolutely. Mike was, you know, obviously he was an event director and, and basically, you know, I mean, ran the, the Great Lakes, you know, division um, of Sport Bike Track Time. And we had a few really, really, really awesome calls when we were not at events. Uh, one of my favorites was, uh, and he would always call Bonnie, you know, Bon Bon. Mm -hmm. He called. So we're driving down the road, get a phone call. Hey, Bon Bon, it's Mike. It's Miss Sarah. She goes, well, hi, Mike. He goes, hey, I, I've got a question for you. Did you say it was okay for a guy to use an oxygen bottle in the intermediate group? Bonnie's like, what? Yeah, he's got it strapped onto his bike and the hose is running into his helmet. And Bonnie's like, um, no, Mike, I absolutely did not give that permission. She goes, well, you know, he does fine in the novice group without oxygen, but if he's going to click it up to the intermediate group, he needs the O2. So I just kind of wanted to, you know, see you know, what your thoughts were on that. And she's like, is it okay to strap a rocket onto, I mean, and, and he would never get excited. He would just call and he'd say, you know, okay. And then he told the guy, 
You know, I mean, just stuff like that. It would be, we would just laugh. You know, I'm like, really, <laughs> really? Did we just get this phone call? But he, you know, he's like, you know, hey, let me call the owners and let's see what they say. I mean, it was great. And I've got, you know, there's a bunch of stories. Like that. We've done a lot of different days here for this opener. Beautiful days, warm days, sunny days, rainy days. Through all of it, they never missed one. I remember one time Mike and I were down here at Pit Out chiseling ice off of the track entry because a little stream went through there and we had to get it off. It was, uh, and it seems like just yesterday that that happened. Um, so again, uh, what, a, what a long time that was uh, ago, but it seems like yesterday, you know, this family is, is amazing. And uh, Mike was truly the godfather of it. So um, for that, we're gonna have uh, a celebration of life this afternoon after the track meeting and all day long. Uh, we've got a plaque here that we're going to put on the tech shed where they spent all of their weekends for the last 20 years. Uh, again, we're so very grateful uh, for, for what they did and very honored. Um, for those of you who don't know, we're also going to do a reverse parade lap at lunch. We're going to line up as we normally would down here. Uh, at uh what was it owen 12 45 and we're gonna go out at about 12 50. we're gonna do one reverse lap around by and they come around again and come in for anybody who's here you're you're more than welcome and we would appreciate it if you would participate in that one thing about mike is mike never had anything bad to say anyone, no matter how much shit the rest of us talked about people or customers or other staff members or anything else, that guy, yeah, he, uh, never, yeah. 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 all right, I gotta send that, we're sending it to Ryan, which Ryan, three years after Mike, yeah, yeah Mike, Mike, uh, Mike, Todd Thomas, Justin, Bowen, those are fixtures, yeah, yeah. It's funny, Justin doesn't look that old. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's, he's unlike me. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Mike, one of the times this was, and this was the kind of, you know, kind of logic that Mike used. So we were at Grattan, and one of the Buell rider, uh, you know, brag riders, uh, had this weird coming out of the, the bowl. The bike got sideways, kind of high-sided, then did this weird cartwheel, hit the guardrail, went up into a tree, and broke in half. The only thing holding the front forks on the motorcycle was the brake cable, the throttle cable. So Sam has to go get a front end loader. And here's Sam. You know, I mean, you think he'd be, like, upset that the bike was in a tree. He's like, hmm, well, I haven't seen that in a while. I mean, that's all. You know, brings it back. <laughs> so this rider, after the day was over, you know, I think this was, like, the last second of the last session, he said, hey, Monty, you know, you've got a bunch of Aprilia's over there. Can I borrow one for tomorrow? And I'm like, You've got to be freaking kidding me. You just broke a motorcycle in half and put it into a tree, you know? And uh, Macera standing right there and he goes, Hey, Monty, he goes, Listen, he goes, What are the chances? What are the chances of Viola putting another motorcycle into that tree and breaking it in half tomorrow? I'm like, Probably zero. He goes, So let him borrow the bike. Works for me. <laughs> and I did. You know, and of course, <laughs> nothing happened, but, but that's Mike, you know? He's like, Instead of seeing like, you know, potential disaster, he's like, Hey, you know, what could possibly go wrong? So that was, he was always, uh, he, he was very optimistic when it came yeah. to stuff like that, you know? So. I just wanted to say, um, I, I did not have the privilege of knowing Mike, uh, but I have gotten to know him through several people over the past few months. And I love it. Uh, it. It reminds me of a time where uh, my, uh, a good friend of mine who was great with people, he did a memorial service for someone, and he sat around the family and he asked them, uh, hey, tell me some uh, great things about this guy. And not one person could say one, one good thing about that man. He was around 80 years old, I I showed up. I moved into a, a flat above Dennis Baker, and he's like, "Hey, I got this group. We ride Buells." I was like, "Cool." So we went to Shields. I met Mike and Jeff and Cozy and, and the the core group. And then, like a month later, he's like, "Hey, we're gonna do this thing. It's, it's like a track day. You can come out and and uh, and 
ride with us and whatever. And, and I rode out there at the time, Mike had a, it was a Ford Econoline van. It was like a church van Yeah. that he pulled that, he pulled the very same trailer that, that you saw the last time he was at the track and gadget took the rest of our bikes. And we called that the Southfield short bus. And we used to, we traveled all over the, the upper Midwest, Mike and Sally and me and, and me and Baker in the Southfield short bus having just the time of our lives. It it sounds, yeah, it sounds great. Ownership. That was er early on. The dildo stuff? Yeah. <laughs> what? I know that it was in drawer three of the toolbox. <laughs> that's about all I know. That, that's all I've ever heard. Everything's in drawer that's, three. That's all I've ever heard. Well, everything, need, everything was in drawer, drawer three. three. Yeah. Any, anybody asked for a tool, it was in drawer three where the dildo was. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there, too. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't even know. I used to do track days when it was Sylvania track time, and Monty ran all that. So I have a, a T-shirt and a membership card that so it says Sylvania track time, which is pretty humorous because right. every night I'll pull it out and take a picture, or somebody's like, "Oh my God, you got one of the shirts!" Right. So Sylvania sport bike went out of business, and Monty kept the track time. It's still there too. <laughs> That's the fun. The guy that came over to change us, the, the doorknob fell off going to the garage. So I called the guy. He came over. He says, "Where's your tool set?" <laughs> <Drawer three. laughs> In the garage. So he opens up. He's looking for the tool. He always says, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> Don't touch that. I look at my tool. I'm like, that because he was so bald. Because <laughs> it's all greasy, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's some loot. Oh, was it, is it a dealership? Yeah, it was a dealership. Okay, so it started out as like a dealership Ohio. track rental thing. Yeah, Sylvania, Ohio, and they did started doing track days for customers. Okay, that's cool. Customer appreciation thing. You bought a Ducati, you came out, you, you did a track day with them and whatnot, and then... Patrick closed up the business and Monty took off with then changing the name to Sport Bike Track Time. So it's always been STT, it's just different name. Hey, I mean, it was, a, it was a lifetime here of, you know, for me it was 98, I think I started coming to the track. Yeah, I think Richard said over 20 years. Yeah, this I don't morning. know when Mike got involved because it was Monty. And then... No, so. Mike, I think Do you know Mike? Rich... Huh? Do you know Mike well? I've known him for since so, like seven, eight years. Mike just came here with a group of people that would rent the track on Buell. I think the Buell Club, Buell, yeah, yeah. The Buell Club, and they came in. What was that guy's name that transported all of the stuff over here for you guys? Gadget. It was, it was Frank. Mm. Frank is Gia's dad, and I know Gia yes. really well. They would come here, and they would just hit out of a semi-truck and mm. ride. Well, of course, Mike's a great person and like love to instruct. Sure. That's how he got involved. He was the best teacher ever. And uh, I think Monty told me maybe he had some sort of mailing list and that's kind of what helped start it. Is that right? Is it? I don't know about that. I'm not sure. I don't even about a mailing list. I know SCT started with some kind of mailing list because there's a bunch of people that wanted to ride. And well, SDT track. used to be Sylvania, Sylvania. Super Bikes yeah. when I knew. Yeah. Okay. Used to rent. Was it Super Sylvania? Was it Sylvania Sport Bike or Sylvania Super Bike? Super Bike. And it was Sylvania Track, track time. time. Sylvania Track Time. Is In right. fact, there's a picture of Patrick inside. Have you not seen the picture of Patrick? I haven't. So, but that's how it started with Monty getting involved, and then they started coming to do track days. It's not for you. I and you ended up becoming so addicted to teaching and instructing and helping people become better riders. It is terrible. Is that what that is? So he asked, he got asked to be a director. No, that's, and then um, two decades uh, of that. Of two decades of that. Huh. Oh, yeah. I'm taking communion. Yeah. One of the nicest guys well, I've met in the organization. Almost two decades. On the table. 18 yeah. years. Oh, How bad it is. Yeah. Mm. I know he'd been doing it a long time when I met I was gonna, him. I was glad you and I'd never been up to Groton before. I'd never rode here before. this. I can't That's, believe he drinks that. He yeah. never drank this. Oh, this it's is horrible. Is this the brandy and wine on ice? No, because you won't. It's on no, so just, no, no. Because oh, Sally won't. How many of my stands do you have? It's got nothing to do with me. It's because Sally <laughs> won't drink, drink it. it. So something. <laughs> it won't exactly. get drank while he's sitting there. He drank vodka until I started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Yep. Awesomeness. Well, this is the exact opposite of the plan. All I've heard over and over and over again is the 
incredible impact that he has made on people's lives. And I can't imagine what kind of impact that he has had on my lives over this past 20 plus years that he has worked with the track. So what uh, an honor for you guys and for all of you that have been impacted by him. Uh, what, what an amazing life. What, a, what an amazing thing that he can be remembered that way. Hey, do you have a special ranch or do you have a tire gauge? You might think, oh, yeah, sure, it's in the top drawer. <laughs> just go over there, help yourself. And, you know, they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> and we're all just sitting there laughing because some people would either say something or some people would just have a weird look and they just you get what they need and they would leave <laughs> and not say nothing like they were embarrassed. To say yeah, that. that's perfect. Yeah, cause that's, I didn't think about that, but totally. This guy's keeping his sex toys in here. I guess I better just keep moving. It was vibrating. Nine times out of ten, it's an electric razor, but every once in a while, it's a dildo. Just another, <laughs> just another tool for another job. Right. <laughs> Little fuzzy things out. Maybe it's out. So, What's happening here? Yes. <laughs> that, that. I just want to go have a drink. Yes. Why are you guys doing this? Yes. It was. Of course, it's company policy never to imply ownership in the event of a dildo. We have to use the indefinite article, a dildo, never your dildo. I don't own. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> there was literally two days where I think I got 500 emails, uh, 250 sure. from Mike and 250 from the staff. And, and here's Michael. Let me call Jeff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeff, what's happening? <laughs> Jeff, what's happening? <laughs> Bear with me, Harris. I almost got it. Bear with me, Harris. I almost got it. Yeah. Bear with me, Harris. I almost got it. I think, okay, Mike. I know, let me try it one more time. Okay, Mike. Okay, Wait, Mike. I finally just four. was like... Everybody oh. only got four of <laughs> Yeah, right. That's good, man. He was so happy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey Dan, and our band was turned one last year. And, and obviously me and him. Well, the lightning strike the year before, the patches, the, the crater that we created, the, the ripples, other, yeah. the bumps, the... So we yeah. okay. okay. Me and Brock were not anymore. Right. There was no more yeah. clear yeah. path. Like top of three, top of three, three years ago? Three or four years ago, the top of three, right on your preferred line, about a foot and a half out. There developed a divot over the course of the day. It wasn't there in the morning. And it's kind of funny. The way that this all started off was um, um, I uh, got into motorcycles when I was really young and, and you know, started the whole track day thing uh, later on. Uh, as I went to, it was called uh, Ducati Owners Club of Canada. That's how I kind of, you know, Did got you live a little in bit Canada? of Canada. <laughs> no, they used to do an event at Grafton. Okay, and, all right. Uh, it was over, over Fourth of July weekend. And then, um, so I did that. And then a friend of mine, Terry Collins, who worked at Johnson Controls, and uh, he invited me to a private track day at Grattan, and there was like seven or eight of us. And um, it was really super fun. And I mean, it was just, you know, was it, Sam. Was it sponsored by a company or is just a group of dudes? You know, just threw cash in the, in, the, in the hat and paid for it. You know, okay. so it was like, thank you. Uh, $200 each or, you know, $175 each, something like that. Not bad. I mean, um, something, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you consider, like, we were done by 3 o'clock. You know, it's like Sam's like, you know, you guys got the track till 5. We're like, send the ambulance home, man, because, like, we're done. You know, I mean, we're not going back out yeah. there. And there was no organization except it was just basically like Fight Club, you know? I mean, if you invited somebody, you were responsible for that. You know, if they did something stupid, it was kind of on them. And yeah, that, yeah. Was how, that was how the, you know, basically uh, at that time, Great Lakes Road Racing Association, I don't know if you remember that or if you've ever heard of it. I got into track uh, riding in 07. Just, okay, so, so they, were, they were gone. But that was the only way to get on a racetrack was go racing with like Weira, mm -hmm. you know, or Great Lakes Road Racing Association, Eric Naki uh, at Grattan. There just were very few channels to get on a racetrack regularly. Yeah, so that's like, what I that's what I've heard. Um, the, who did that California Superbike School? That was Keith Cope. Yeah, yeah, that that was one of the few things I think was around that maybe 
But, but once a year, he'd come through like I'm Reg Pridmore, you know, Pridmore's uh, mm-hmm. school would come through like one, once a year. So maybe you could do Pridmore at Mid Ohio and Keith Code at Grad, you know, or something like that. And mm-hmm. otherwise, you know, if you didn't race, you just weren't getting on the racetrack. I mean, it turned into a long time. I think it snuck up on people. Yeah, it, it really did. And yeah. then out of nowhere, like Mike becomes the the face of the company. He was as present and sometimes even more present than Monty at these events because Monty was traveling. He had to bounce between the Northern and Southern divisions. At one point we had a Western division that didn't, it didn't last very long. And then we had an Eastern division. So he's trying to manage all these things. Well, Mike became the the face of the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, when the Southern division started before Trevor was a guy named Mark Sheldon, that his brother Jim Sheldon, I, I, I was it Trackaholics, I think was the name of the group that ran, that they ran. I don't, Mike I, Sheldon yeah. went. Down, Mike Sheldon went down south, and we all traveled down to Jennings to train all those guys in like what we do. Right. Like Mike taught Mike taught uh, Mark Sheldon how to do a riders meeting. Sure. And then we just had a, a ton of fun down there too, but. I mean, it was, it was just, it, it was, it's, it's, I don't know how to put it into words because it became like family. It was like as much of a, of a track dad as, as Mike was, he was also like a brother to everybody there. Yeah, and, for and sure. It, it was, it was it, it, just a, a cool environment that I, I don't know how to play. I never saw Mike mad. <laughs> you I know what? Had. I didn't either. Never saw that Unless man some mad. some guy hit on me too many times and he, I said no twice. That little fucker. <laughs> 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 Seriously. You would yeah. walk up to a six foot two guy and do this. She said no twice. And the guy would go, oh, I'm just trying to talk to you. Let's take it outside. Okay, man. Okay. And the guy would walk away. <laughs> That's her. Yeah. Oh. So I never saw that look that he gets that scares a six foot two guy. <laughs> I'm glad I never saw that. <laughs> we were in the trenches a couple of good times at these events, but he never broke his cool and he nope. never got mad. He just straight as a line. Done. Take care of it. Done. Yep. And Mike would put her to bed. Yeah. But, you know. I mean, good times. Um, Another thing that was a Mike thing was uh, the Styrofoam McDonald's cups. If you ever seen, we yeah. always had the McDonald's cup. I never got the cup, but one day McDonald's ran out of the plastic ones, and I got a Styrofoam cup, and I got a large Diet Coke, and the thing held ice all day. So I was like, "This has got to be it. This has got to be the Mikeism. Why he wants the Styrofoam cup? Because anytime he goes to McDonald's, he'd ask for the Styrofoam cup. So." Um, <laughs> That's funny. No, really? just, no. Well, how do we just dive into this? I don't know. What are, you, what are we? I got it. Just follow me. Mm-hmm. Max and I have been going to the track together since he was, geez, man. Two like, weeks old. Probably two weeks old. You know, and there was a lot of times where it was just you and I, and yeah. Grattan's our home track, mm-hmm. and Mike and Sally – Always ran the Grattan events. They were there every time. I don't remember a weekend without them. Never a weekend without them, you know. And and when you see somebody year after year, right, at events that are really important to you, you get really close and you form relationships. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, a lot of people did that with Mike and were on that list. Yeah. It's unfortunate that he passed away. You know, it's it's sad. sad. Feel real bad for Sally. Yeah. You know, that's tough when you lose somebody that you spend all your time with. Yeah, sure. They do everything together. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to say that. It just sounds like so negative and start over. Let's just talk about happy shit. Yeah. So that and me Mike was my best friend. Probably about 17 years. So it's, it's a That's a long time. Yeah. How'd you meet him? Fuel 
you were one of the original Buell guys. Yeah. I'll try and get it back together. Yeah. Buell I guess you Brad. probably knew before the rest of us. Most of us, Justin, Justin Chimalowski was there, Dennis Baker, yeah. a few others. And we had his coaches, Cozy, we all started together as a Buell group. And that turned into Buells on the track. And then eventually we all grew the Buells and the rest is history. What kind of Buells did you have? We all started out with tube framers because that's, that's what we were dealing with the late 90s, early 2000s. Track pigs. Those are cool bikes. I fortunately still had mine yeah. when they brought us all together. That's, that's what I took out. You still have it. That's, that's oh, is that that silver one? Yes. That's, that's, that's cool. That's very cool. Uh, those guys picked up the XG9s and the rest of us did. Uh, I love that bike. I, I did buy Dennis's old XP9 after Dennis got rid of that. Yeah. Uh, like I said, a few of them started out, the Buell Brad group started out in the late 90s. And I joined it in 2001. That's that was a blast. Mission accomplished. Bear run. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Babe only the beer. Oh, the picture. All right. <laughs> what did you guys call this? Like a right now, you hit it, and it, it unsettles your bike as you're tipping over the crest. So you, you tip right, you know, six inches or left six inches, and you clear it. And I always choose to go right. But turn one, you try a different line and it'd be worse. You try another line and it'd be about the same. And it was it was just crap. But the, the smoothness of turn one today. But three looks good. Was I was amazing. just walking three. Three looks good. Yeah. Three is not that bad. It's and not then, it's not bad. Uh, four, two? No. Nope. Nope. Oh, you didn't see one. Oh, they, they redid four, but it was like four years ago. Yeah, and they put yeah. that big oh, ass, tall ass turd repaid. inside yeah. of four. And there there was, used to be a small you know, concrete thing, patch <laughs> and then some sand, and I would like to I, I like to put my knee there Amanda, for the first time. For I'll come in here and fuck with you because I'm a degenerate just like the rest of you motherfuckers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And all, and so somebody's got to come to the party. First time I came through, I about took my knee off because I was like, oh, oh no. shit. And I pulled it back up. Dude. That's a fucking drink right there, I actually buddy. dipped. I, I actually kicked a little dirt onto the track in one. Really? <laughs> Accidentally. Because <laughs> it was so smooth. It was so smooth and I was actually it's amazing. going a touch slower a because I was, I was evaluating that a was guy genuine. in I 4A. Yes. Yes. And I, I went past Fresh. him and went through there. I'm like, oh, I just about, I I just about took my leg off. That was fun. The thing that I think is sort of incredible is um, that, uh, I mean, before that, there really wasn't track days as we know it. I mean, no, yeah. it, they're, they're really, Monty sort of, I mean, you could do there was, race practice. On there, was like, there was like Pridmore and there was that, uh, that one dude, um, the California the Superbike Penguin. school guy. Yeah. Keith Code. Yeah. And then like Todd Thomas got into it. He just showed up at a race practice on a Friday and started racing. And that was, that was track days before track days were a thing. And then Monty took that and made it a whole weekend for people that, didn't really want to race, give them more track time. And then this, the, the idea of this, this novice group sort of came out. We showed up as, as brag, but then of course, Mike always working a deal, right? He, he always had a, he always had an angle and, and he came in and he started talking to Monty as um, Monty's, I guess, head instructor at the time with this guy named Patrick. They and and they both, uh, the and it, it was it, there was not really anything written, there was like a one page outline for years. That I mean, Miss Sarah used to do the school group, and, and we used to make fun of them in the back row, and then it expanded to Dennis and Cozy, and and all it was funny, all these brag members all got Japanese sport bikes, and then here we are today. But we used to we used to joke about Mike and and his his little isms. He had this whole 
engineering explanation of why you need to be on the gas and the chain pull effect and how you you align the the axes of the the front and rear wheel and the crankshaft by by yanking on the chain and it was, it was so funny i'm like what the fuck are you talking about mike why don't you just tell them to stay on the gas and and that's all they need to know and he, he, he was he, average why don't you just shut the fuck up <laughs> I, uh, it's in october there uh i looked at mike and as i i did we joked a lot with each other i kind of put my hands in front of his pants saying dude how are you losing that kind of weight because i can't do that oh i'm just not eating and all that crap not knowing that if i would have taken a step back i might have looked at him a little deeper and say maybe something's wrong but that's hindsight being 2020 and that's not fair but yeah it, it's a huge bummer he left us i was mad at first there's no doubt uh but my good friend justin calmed me down in about three four hours and you know what i celebrated the guy's life i still do because he deserved that he gave us his life and we're going to continue that with whatever we can do, whether we're drinking his drink, watching his bikes around the track, you know, uh, things like that. So yeah, cont- um, and continuing to run events the way he would as well, you know. Deal. You've got one guy that's concentrating yeah, yeah, yeah. on the on the, the wrenches, and one guy that's concentrating on riding the bike. And the guy that's concentrating on riding the bike is young. Are and- you cold? Just a little bit. I'll give you this. It looks like it. Yeah. Thank you. I need to. Chivalry I need to get up. I need to get like really close. And, yeah. <laughs> That's and right. Oh, we had this conversation. We had this conversation. I got. I didn't know. It's, it's I was the, at their awesome shit collected. That's why I got I asked some. You. Good. you guys. I don't know. I got. Adios. I don't know what else to do. Drive fast. So take work? chances. We got a pretty rowdy. Farm animals. Petting zoo, I should say. Hmm. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, sounds uh, like a pretty neat place. Pretty cool. They're mm-hmm. still shorter, 100%. Is it good? Are we yeah, Are we good? Who's taller? Definitely your dad, without question. Him? By barely anything, though? No, by a lot. Like an inch and a half. Fucking A. That's a big number. You have a hat. A hat doesn't add anything. I get tricked. I'd ask Michael... As a brand new staff member, let's call myself a staff member. And then, even as years go on, I got I got nailed with it again last year. I just forgot. Next thing you know, there's a big, dirty, <laughs> now dirty, greasy dildo in the drawer. Next again, the 12 millimeter wrench. I wish I didn't need to borrow, but it makes me laugh because the dildo dildo dance story was so epic within the companies. It, it resonated with all of us. Same dildo. Yeah. Same okay. Dildo. Double. Yeah. Double of course it is. One. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just going like this at the end. <laughs> this was really, really good to see that thing flopping around on the back of that motorcycle at Gingerman Raceway to the biggest dick in the history of motorcycling, D- Dildo Dan. <laughs> yes. That was Gingerman. Okay. And he thought he was so fast because everybody's pointing. Yeah, everyone's cheering, everyone's cheering for him. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was like, yeah. And he pulls up and he stops and hop it. <laughs> and everybody's like coming over. And taking pictures. Uh, he's thinking so He thought he broke track record. Yeah. And people taking pictures of him. Steady had a big build on his super bike. You know, I'd been harping on Patrick. I'm like, hey man, we need to do these track days. We need to do these track days. And uh, so uh, finally we did, and they were really successful. I mean, they were full. You know, so, and oh, 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 I don't mean to interrupt you, but the the, Cana- the Johnson Controls guy and all that stuff was before yeah. you had Sylvania Superbike. Before Sylvania track days, right? But then yeah. you, but there's a period where you had a dealership or you were a partner in a dealership. No, or... You know, I was not a financial partner. Most people thought I was just because I had a real close relationship with Patrick, uh, the owner. But so no, you, I you had, worked uh, for Patrick? I did not. No, your... I just, I was just a, uh, I met Patrick when he first opened the shop and uh, became good friends with him and his wife and Richard, who worked at the shop, and Steve, that worked at the shop. And it just became one of those kind of really okay. beneficial okay. mutual relationships. Gotcha. So he had, he had um, the dealership and you had the interest in track days and you sort of yep. put them together. Well, and let's see, I bought a Ducati 996 from him, an Aprilia RS250, an Aprilia Miele, a Triumph Trophy 1200. I spent a little bit of money in there. Yeah, you were, you know, yeah, they, you were a good they, customer. They treated, me well, treated me very well. So, yeah, it was, it was really awesome. And uh, so, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, do the track day thing. And finally, he's like, yeah, 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 let's do that. And so we went up, talked to Sam at Grattan, and uh, I think we had them. They were all on Mondays, uh, you know, didn't have any weekend stuff. And uh, they were, you know, they were awesome. We would sell out. 
uh, started, you know, kind of loosely breaking it up into three groups, but didn't really have a structure per se, just like, hey, you know, you're like the C rider, you're a B rider, you know, you've got a race license and, you know, so it, it was kind of self-sorting. So, and it still worked fairly well. You know, it was, it was fun. And so Grattan was the first track that this stuff all happened at then, at least for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And what a great place. I mean, you know, and you know this, and you've heard this from tons and tons of people, but you can go fast at Grattan. You can go fast anywhere. Absolutely. What a a great track to learn on. I mean, Uh, it just doesn't get much better. Absolutely. Well, Thomas Express. Woo! Richard was one of our very first customers at, I think I saw him uh, for the first time at Grattan, um, and he was riding TZ250s, and he had just blown a motor, which happened. And, uh, you know, he's like, I'm like, what happened? He goes, ah, I got to put a new, you know, put the new motor in. And I'm like, really? You know, he says, oh, I won't even miss a session. I'm like, there is no way that you can put a motor in that motorcycle in like 32 minutes. And I watched and Richard is a hell of a mechanic. I believe and that. He is really, really good. And he was early. He was like out to the grid like three minutes, three minutes early. And that's when I, that's when I'm like, wow, this guy is special. And then they used to bring a big, uh, it was like a box trailer, but it had a residential air conditioning unit in it. Okay. And uh, okay. and I just used to laugh at that, you know. And he's like, "Man, they're way cheaper than the RV ones, you know. I mean, plus they work better." Yeah, sure. So it was a red, a red trailer with a big R, you know, big residential uh, air conditioner in it. He's not and, wrong. Uh, yeah, and him and Jeff Maloney and and uh, you know Jeff was a big shit too. Uh, shit. What do you want me to say? I don't know. You've been here as long as anybody. Say some shit. Well, I met Masera about seven or eight years ago. You were in the hospital. Um, Ouch! Way to fire it up. <laughs> no, it was weird. I feel like I'm still there all of a sudden. <laughs> it, it was it was it was weird because I, I I didn't know any of you. I didn't know any of you, and I ended up in a real weird situation with that one photographer. And I'm not trying to get into the drama about him, but I, but I had to figure it out that one day. And Masera, fucking, he made it right. He made it cool. I don't know nothing. I was in the hospital. No, you you were in the hospital. Tre- I didn't know Trevor, but I ended up having some conversations with him. But me and Masera joked about it for years after that and hang out at the Candlestone and he was cool and he was reasonable about it. But that's how that's how I ended up here. Uh, Chrissy Midlam booked me for a day that I wasn't supposed to be booked for. Um, and then Masera was cool. And then you, I don't think you knew what was going on for like a year. I can tell you and Bonnie were broke. Bonnie and Sasha were broke. Hi, Joe. How are you? It's golden hour. Because I Yeah. Real pretty. Facebook Joe Hansen. Facebook Joe Hansen. This is when Brad Hansen was still looking pretty in his Zurich golden hour. Oh, it's the lighting. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all about the lighting. Oh, okay. I do like the beard. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
memorial that we had. Yeah, for sure. It, it definitely was. We would have skipped a Moto America race for that. Yeah, no matter what. Yep. Yeah, 100 percent. You know, to be there for Sally and support her in that, you know, and give her an idea of how loved she is in the community. And there is a tremendous amount of love for Mike and Sally, no yeah. question. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're on the list of people that love them. You know, we want the best for her. We hope she keeps coming out because she'll be missed if we she know. doesn't. I hope to see her, you know, every weekend that we're there. So. Blueberry muffins. Yeah. yeah. Re remember that when she used yeah. to bring you those from yeah. the Candlestone yeah. all the time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Muffin Max is what I was called. <laughs> Muffin Max. I, yeah. I still get called. I still get called that. Yeah, you do. And that was long before you yeah. were ever, ever able to ride anything yeah. at the racetrack. Mm -hmm. Your first track day. Remember that? Who was, I think it was you and I think Morgan rode too. Yeah, she did. Right? Dave's daughter, yeah. Morgan Babel, she mm -hmm. rode. And remember you guys got a little extra riders meeting from Mike. Yeah. Can you remember what Mike told you? Because it was actually pretty good advice. I, I do not, honestly. It was that, oh, it was, come on. It was so long ago. It was three, four years ago. Four years ago, yeah. And you're only 15 years old. I mean, are you fading already? Dementia's setting in? Yeah, I think so. Come on, man. <laughs> he made sure that you guys were focused and on point and you were taking it serious, you know, and, and that's just yeah. kind of the way Mike was, you know, Mike. I, I remember a little bit of a, a little yeah. bit of a pep talk, but I don't remember what he said exactly. Yeah. But that's I fair. Yeah. A little bit of a pep talk and, and making sure you guys were on point mm -hmm. and that you understood it wasn't a game and that mm -hmm. it was real consequences any yeah. actions you take on the racetrack would have real consequences i know dave and i we weren't in the meeting we were kind of outside it was in the back of the tech shed there at Grattan. you know but that's just one of those moments you don't forget because for you that was a huge moment yeah it was that was your first that's, day yeah, that's what started it that's what started this so, and yeah. where are you riding now um moto america went from novice sct days to professionally racing which is cool that is that is pretty cool and mike yeah. and sally played a big part of that mm -hmm. Love you forever, Sally. Never yeah. forget you, Mike. Get in close. Yeah. Better get it real close. Get in there. Get that feeling in there. Get it. Get in there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it really is bittersweet. Like you know, it, it's a it's great that everyone remembers him how he was. Like we I I didn't get to see any of buddies and we, we we probably talked more funny than we did business, but there is that time with my kid and Max. Uh, was going to do their very first track day together, and I remember being in the back of the, the the tech shed in the back room back there where Cozy used to sleep, and he called Morgan, he called Max, called me and called Van in there, and Michael changed into a, uh, into a, a leader, into a director of care, and that was when he stuck his finger out at these two kids and said, hey, this is not a joke, we're not at a playground, this is serious. You guys are the two first little kids in this racetrack. Make me proud, make your parents proud, and know this is not a joke, and I'm not messing around. Go ride that motor, those motorcycles like you, you want to. Be safe, be smart, and know that this isn't a playground. And, man, me and, me and uh, Van walked out before that speech was done and go, wow, that was epic. What a leader to take time out of his day to take care of our kids, our future, STTs, future and be a, a leader be a dad be a friend and do the right thing that was a really that's another big story that i forgot to tell which i just told it here because that's uh that's mike mike yeah. was cool he was zero drama we'll come find him yeah no he he was completely reasonable i wish i had a dollar for every time he said harris get that shit done right <laughs> harris get that shit done no yeah. It's always, it's always sad when someone goes, but more sad when someone you knew and they, you know, they look how many people are here because of him. When I eventually go, I hope people remember me like people are remembering him. All of a sudden, people are like, you know, hey man, what are we gonna do about track days? You know, I'm like, I. I can do it. I can run the track days, you know, won't be through the shop, but, you know, we'll still call, you know, Sylvania track days. And um, so uh, we did that for a year. And I don't remember how many days we did, uh, Joseph. I think maybe we did maybe five or six days that first year, you know, all Mondays. And not, um, not a money-making uh, venture, per se? Not really, you know. I mean, it was worth our time. Uh, and it was fun, and, and the big thing was is people still got the product. You know, a lot of people were like, hey, you know, who's going to do the, you know, track day, you know, thing? So I decided to, A, change the name, 
because Sylvania Track Time didn't mean anything to people. And I'm a big fan of calling your company what it is, Sport Bike Track Time. You know, that's what we did, right? Um, and uh, and then I started to uh, think about, you know, we could do we could do a better product. And Mike Masera, who was the leader of the Buell Rider Adventure Group, acronym BRAG, mm-hmm. reached out to me. Uh, and I don't remember who the intermediary was, um, if it was at a track event or that, but he said, uh, you know, hey, I'd really like to talk to you. We've got a good group of people here and that. And Mike and I hit it off. You know, Mike is is a really, uh, was a really neat person. Uh, you know, his experience at Ford and that, you know, shown through. And so we started working on uh, an instructional uh, program to really make the novice program work. And we wanted instruction on track and classroom. So between the two of us, we wrote a manual, you know, and it's still in use today. Uh, and we bounced it back and forth, oh gosh, you know, 40 times. Man. We're working on various things. Yeah. I, mean, I, did, just, I, I did, didn't, I knew Mike went way back, but I didn't realize like it was that much. You know, um, the original group, if you will, was, uh, and I'm going to, you know, somebody's going to be mad at me because I'm going to forget their name, but, uh, you know, track coaches were Mike Macera, um, let's see, Steve Heilman, uh, Todd Thomas, Jason, or Justin uh, Shimlaski, mm-hmm. uh, who else was in that original group? I talked um, to Jeff Bowen. So uh, I, I, yeah, I was just going to say Bowen mm-hmm. uh, was in that group. Um, you know, Todd Thomas. Yeah, uh, Todd Thomas. We go back. We go back to street racing days. You know, at midnight on Fridays and Saturdays in Detroit. I've actually spoken to Todd. I mean, I yeah. I have a recording of Todd that's going into this. <laughs> that's where that's where we met. You know, and it, I mean, he's on a Jixer one thousand, and I'm on a Ducati nine hundred. You know, nobody even knew what a Ducati was. You know, if you weren't on a Suzuki or a Kawasaki and those street racing groups, you just didn't yeah, exist. for sure. <laughs> But, but, Mike, so, but Mike is a lot. Mike worked with you to like really sort of build the program that we know today. Anyway, yeah, and to and to you know that novice program uh, is an important part of the brand. Oh, absolutely! I mean, it's it's what separates SDT I mean, from everything else. At least, well, not as much now as it used to because obviously people have copied it. But yep, you know. But and you know one of the things that I I uh, didn't have a problem with is um, leaning on that program really hard as a reference material. There were a couple people that copied it verbatim, and obviously that was unacceptable. We took you know, the necessary actions to, to stop it. But people who approached us and said, hey, you know, you've got a good program. Are there some things that we could use out of it? You know, because basically people getting on a racetrack are going on that racetrack to have fun in a safe, organized manner. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, my writer's meeting, I had a couple people videotape it and say, is it okay if we use this writer's meeting? I'm like, sure, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. Good, you know that what's good for the writers is good for the sport. So yeah, it's a tough thing to copyright because it really is kind of, I don't know if you say pure common sense, but it's it, getting people to learn the proper techniques and just sort of the, just the safety of it and everything is, it just makes it a much more enjoyable experience. And because, you know, you can actually learn to go fast and getting hurt and crashing your bike sucks. You well, know, so. um, a good friend, Nick Einsuch, used to, this is his big thing. He goes, wouldn't it be awesome to go faster with less risk? That's exactly. It. That's exactly. And then have all those skills that you learned on the racetrack transfer out on the street. So the day that you're going around a corner, if you still ride on the street, and there's a Winnebago coming at you halfway over the center line, you don't target fixate into the grill. You just, you know what? I can lean the spike over a little further. I can tighten my line. Absolutely. Break, and you know what? I just missed a Winnebago. You know, People know. realize today that it that program wasn't something that just existed forever. Like, nope. it was just a bunch of people running time on the track. So, yep. but that's, and, uh, and the, the nuts and bolts of the novice program were, you know, a bunch of meetings at Shields Pizza. You know, up off the of Telegraph, uh, that was where we would meet in person and, and work on some stuff. Um, you know, and, and and then try it out and then tweak it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. it was a, it was a work in progress for probably a full season. And so, at one point, I guess you guys decided to grow it because obviously, it it is what it is now. Yep. And Mike, uh, you know, Mike was always uh you know, the king of Grat, and I mean, you know, that he loved that place, and, and uh, you know, not quite as much Gingerman, um, 
and then you know we used to do a lot of stuff at Mid Ohio. Well, um, you know we uh, and and Mike. So Mike basically, uh, for all intents and purposes, took over the um, you know the Great Lakes uh, division and ran all the events at Grattan and at Gingerman. And uh, when we were at Mid Ohio, did all the Mid Ohio stuff. Okay. You know he was uh, he was the event director and, and did a wonderful job. Um, you know, we've all got our, our Macera stories. You know, there was the third drawer down in the toolbox. Yeah, that one. That one we've heard that one a lot. <laughs> was a rite of passage. Yeah. You know, if you were if you were potentially track coach material, we wanted to see basically how you could function in a no quarter asked, no quarter given environment. So it would be, hey, can you hand me a screwdriver? It's in the third drawer down. And there would be like <laughs> one or three responses. The person would open it, see what was in there, close it, and act like they, they never even went in there. They would open it, look at it, and scream, and then close the door. Or they'd reach in, grab it, pull it out, and bring it over to Mike. You know? <laughs> and obviously, that last person is the one we were looking for. You know, it was so funny. And I'm not going to say exactly what was in that door, but let's just say that it was a large sex toy. Oh, I, so, I've, uh, I've seen the picture of it taped to the back of Dildo Dan's bike. I'm, I'm familiar. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, that was so classic. Yeah. Oh, gosh. You know what? I mean, there. I've never seen people laugh that hard and and faces hurt that much after that went down. God, that was so much fun. Yeah, you know I, what? And, yeah. and that's the stuff, you know, I don't miss anything about uh, – um, not owning sport bike track time as far as the motorcycles on the racetrack and stuff, you know, it was a good run, had a lot of fun, but I do miss that. You know, those are just irreplaceable and unduplicatable opportunities of uh, camaraderie, you know? I mean, just being...